I hear more females that I know not happy about that either. But also, your friends don't Do like not. Taylor Swift. I'm not That's saying- not true. Joseph is a mean. Yes. Yes. It's because you, you can't take ball breaking. You can't take ball breaking. No, you can't. Yeah, I can. Barely, bro. What did I just say that got you so <laughs> upset? I don't want to say the word. That word got you upset? Uh, that started it. That initiated it. Oh, my God. Dude, you're so soft. You're fucking soft. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Tell me how you really feel. I'm about to spit everywhere. Um, happy Super Bowl Sunday. By the time you see this, it's not Super Bowl Sunday. <sighs> what's your What's your prediction so we can see how wrong we both are? Okay, so I saw this theory that apparently... I gotta get that as a sound bite. Apparently... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I saw this. So prior, I would have said, I'd like to see the Niners win. Um, I did see this theory that if the Niners win, Trump will win. If the Chiefs win, then Biden will win or Kamala Harris or whoever's going yeah. at that point will win. If that's the case, can they both tie? <laughs> Cause it's like. I'm, Which one's the lesser of the two evils? I'm not into either at this point, if I'm being <laughs> fucking honest. Can we get somebody that's not like a geriatric? Not to be an ageist guy. Yeah, but that's like, kind of ageist. But they're, they're fucking in you their really, 70s. They're, really, past the, they're past like retirement age. You both don't think, of them, I know. You don't think that that's a problem? Potentially. I'm not saying that you have to be like... What if I became president? You're not old enough to become president. How old do you have to be to become president? 35. Which... <clears throat> <laughs> What if you become president? (laughs) All of a sudden, we just, on the ballot, everyone's writing Joseph DiOrio. Joseph Leonard DiOrio. I wouldn't win because I'm... My name's not Leonard. My name's not not Leonard. (laughs) Because it's not Leonard. (laughs) I wouldn't win because I'm not an extremist on either side. I would not win. You would be an independent. Yeah, but an independent... Never Never has won. they, They never win. Like, I would like a... More centric. Why will an independent win? This is not a political episode. No, I know. But I know. <laughs> you made it one by your theory. Okay, this isn't a theory. This is not my theory. This is a theory. Yeah. I, I need to find the f- the founders of this theory. Um, but this was started by another podcast because um, there was this theory that originally started with the logo and the logo of the Super Bowl are different colors and for the past two years the colors have been accurate based on the logo those are the teams that played this year it was purple and red everyone was convinced that it was going to be Ravens versus Niners because it was purple and red Mm -hmm. Um, however this uh, podcast debunked it and said that the reason why this year wasn't Ravens and Niners was because it's a leap year and because it's a leap year the last time that we had this matchup I'm going to butcher it and I'll have to find it. But the last time we had this matchup, it was an election and this year's an election. So somehow they tied it into if someone wins, then Trump wins. And if the other team wins, then you have Biden win. It's a very interesting. I, and I know what you're saying. We're uh, actually talking about Super Bowl halftime shows, but this is just a yeah, total derailer. But I, I have a good one for you that goes in line with what you're talking about. Not that this is... um. This isn't supposed to be political. But what I'm saying is like there's people who are convinced that sports are fixed. Yes. If that's the case, do not watch it. You don't think that they could remotely be fixed? I think that there is th- there is always that potential. But if I were to fully believe it. I don't know how you would fix a game. but Well, there's... with refs. I mean, the True. guy from the NBA, Tim Donaghy, got busted with that. Refs, oh, I didn't know The that. ref scandal. So, yeah, it's a bad one. Uh-huh. But um. I'm not saying it couldn't happen, but what I'm saying is if, if if I believe that in my head, then I have ruined sports for myself. True. Because I will just constantly if, if you if you're gonna believe that sports are fixed, then why watch it? The new title of this episode is <laughs> Is the NFL rigged? Just kidding. That's not the episode name. But um So hold on, I got a good okay. one for you that goes okay. in line with what you what you were just saying. Okay. This was a this went on for a while that was like pretty uh, it was pretty accurate. So, 
there have been 19 presidential election. Well, this is, all right, hold on. Let me start from the beginning. I apologize. Okay. The Redskins relocated from Boston to Washington, D.C. in 1937. Since then, there have been 19 presidential elections. In 17 of those, the following rule applied. If the Redskins win their last home game before the election, the party that won the previous election wins the next election. Really? And if the Redskins lose, the challenging party's candidate wins. And this has been right 17 of those 19 times. (laughs) Shut up. So what would it mean for this time? I believe they... <laughs> Did they lose or win? They, if the Redskins win their last home game before the election. Well... So when was their last home game? It, it would be this coming year. So, oh, it, so it didn't it didn't happen, happen yet. yet. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, there was like a, a thing that... Uh, yeah, 17 out of 19. It was like some theory that somebody came up with years ago and it's held true. <laughs> That's for crazy. The most part. I'm trying to see if I can find it um, about this like presidential uh, theory um it's just it's very interesting and i'll find it eventually and i'll have to play it for you um but ultimately we were talking originally about super bowl half times the halftime for this year is usher 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 raymond um it's very weird to me that it's usher because one usher hasn't come out in music in forever also two usher was in the height of his years in 2008 um, do you disagree? I'm probably off on the I think he's got enough of a catalog to do this, though. But also, the way they announced it was that Kim Kardashian called Usher to be like, you're playing the Super Bowl. Why is Kim <laughs> Kardashian involved in this? I did not hear that. Okay, hold on. Ready? <laughs> I did not hear I'm going to play this video for you. Um, Kim telling. We got to go through each. I'm going to go from. Like, Literally. That's not that's not current day Usher, bro. No, it's not current day Usher, but they used Kim to like m- this was his pro. He put this on his page as his yeah. promo, like eight September of last year, saying that he was going to do the Super Bowl. Okay. Why is Kim Kardashian tied to this? I really just don't, I don't like her. Why do they show Taylor Swift on every fucking play? Because she's dating Travis Kelsey. What does that have to do with... It's not anything. every play. But oh, it's every fucking play. It's whenever he does something good. Nope. Or nope. if he gets nope. Or if he gets out. Nope. Nope. I, it's even even if they score a touchdown, it's not Kelsey, they show her. I, nah. Yeah, I, bro, I watch the games. What are you talking about? I do too. But here's the thing. I'm just going to leave it at this. This is not a Taylor Swift... Thing. We're talking about Super Bowl halftimes. But I saw this thing, and it was on a picture of Taylor and Travis Kelsey. Go Taylor's boyfriend. I love that. I want that. Just kidding. Dude, that's so I'm sexist. kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Um, on this picture of her hugging Travis Kelsey um, after they won the championship, it said, your daughters are watching you hate Taylor Swift for supporting her boyfriend. And hearing you complain about her taking 60 seconds of airtime of a three-hour game. They hear, be smaller, be less, do better. I love it. I, I don't, I'm not seeing the correlation here. Say this again. Your daughters are watching you hate Taylor Swift for supporting her boyfriend. Inaccurate. Already inaccurate. And hearing you complain about her taking 60 seconds of airtime of a three-hour game. They hear, be smaller, be less. No. Do better. No. <laughs> No, I knew we were going to disagree. It, on it's this. completely because the problem is not her. It's the problem is the companies like CBS that keep a camera on her and show her. And even if it is 60 seconds, it's spread out throughout the three hours. It's not like they just show her for a minute straight. It's throughout the entire game. So everything this guy does, he can't even catch a fucking pass without showing his girlfriend. If anything, they make they kinda it. Did it to Brady, though. Not like as they showed bad. Giselle, like for not any bad, time though. he touched anything, showing not her as hug bad. his mom, his not dad. As not as bad. I don't know. Honestly, they're crazy. making her look like a mascot. You could you could argue that they're setting women back by doing that. Every is time, this, every time he does something, is this going to be our new episode? Every something? time that he does something, they show her. For, for what reason? This is the equivalent, and I know you're going to disagree with this. hundred percent. See, because you're already going in it with a negative mind. 
This is the same thing as if, say she plays a weekly concert. Okay. And then after every single song they show Travis, it would be fun for a minute, right? But every week after every song they show him, would you not get annoyed? If there was a song that was like pertaining to every him? Every song. Yeah. Every song. No, I'd be fine. I watched so many videos of her being like, Karma is the guy on the Chiefs coming straight home to me instead of See, Karma is the guy on, on the screen. Karma's the guy and that, the that's that's Get it? that's hilarious too. Is like you're trying to make he's trying to like spin it to be like this sexist thing that it's like she has no relevance to the game. Do you know how do you know how many other like actors and singers or, or actresses and singers that Go are, to the games. Uh, that are are going to the games and yeah. dating these other players that they don't show? It's not a female thing. It's her. It's because she's like the top pop artist. That's the other problem I have is this. It's the idolizing of celebrity. That is creepy and sick that I don't like. I don't like it. I think it's I think it's 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 a sick mindset. I don't like it. So if you saw Because she doesn't have a part of the game. I mean, she's the supportive girlfriend. And, and what about all the other players? How come they don't show their girlfriends? Because they're probably not on that level of like wow, that that's pretty shitty, huh? It sucks for them. Yeah, it does. But they're probably also Taylor Swift fans, so they probably don't give a shit. Uh, I don't know about that. I think a lot of them are. I don't know, dude, because I've honestly, I I hear more. What's her name? Kristen Jer 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 Jerschick Jer 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 <laughs> I don't know. I hear more females that I know not happy about that either. But also, your friends don't Do like not. Taylor Swift. I'm not That's saying. not true. This episode is sponsored by our friends over at Be A Nice Human. We don't agree on much on this podcast, but one thing we do agree on is our love for the Be A Nice Human brand. Their streetwear includes hoodies, beanies, t-shirts, socks, and more to choose from with the simple phrase, Be A Nice Human. Head over to beanicehuman.me and use the promo code Hate That. That's H, the number 8, T-H-A-T for 10% off your order. And remember, you can still be a badass and be a nice human. Which one of your friends like Taylor Swift? There's a bunch of them that like Taylor Swift. I don't know. I, they're also not like fucking little teeny boppers. So. Well, that's what I mean. Like, I mean, you're not much older than me, but there's so, definitely like a gen generational, not a generational, <laughs> but like there's a gap between us where I, I mean, I stayed watching Disney Channel until I was 20. Like, Yeah, that's creepy. That comment that you just read, you're not speaking for all females on that. No, but it's it's so. saying it's saying that like there's a lot of guys that are just pissed off and having bad because attitudes because nothing she's to do with showing the, them. But like at the same time, I'm a female who likes watching football, and it's kind of nice to see her. I like seeing her. I know females that watch football that can't stand it. So there's somebody for everybody, and some there's. <laughs> it's not just one person. <laughs> But anyway, I digress. I digress as well. How come she's not doing the halftime show? That's what I'm saying. Why? Why is that Taylor would be not fine. doing? But you know what? What if Usher calls Taylor Swift to do? I don't think so, dude. I don't think so either. I think she's just going to be like. Supposedly, they said. I don't know if this is spinning. I keep hearing that maybe Justin Bieber is a surprise guest, because uh, Usher started Justin's career. That's fair. So I guess okay. My take is. Orig originally, before all these like little theories came <laughs> out, I originally was hoping for the Niners w to win. Yeah, I could care less about Usher being there. Ooh. I hope Justin comes and joins, and they sing "Somebody to Love," and that's what I want. What about you? We'll see if I win. I'm right. I I I would not be mad about seeing the Beebs. Okay. Um, I would like to see the Niners win just because it's been they're going on thirty years. They haven't won. I mean, they've been, but they haven't won. Yeah. And it's like, you kind of get sick of seeing the same teams anyway, even though I know they've been and shit, but like, yeah. I think Patriots fans are kind of seeing it now of like, now that they're not the, the darlings, you're seeing the Chiefs are, and it's like, it's sickening when it's not your team. It's annoying. So, I mean, it's nothing against Mahomes or any of them. I just, I would no. rather see the team that hasn't won yeah. in a while. I really wanted the Lions to get there. Me too. Uh, yeah, I'm like, everyone loves, a, everyone loves a good success story. Amen. But... I do wonder what they're going to do for the Super Bowl halftime show. Off the top of your head without looking at the list. Okay. What is the most memorable Super Bowl halftime show for you? Don't say Janet Jackson. Come on, dude. Why? Why? <laughs> That's memorable because. What was your favorite then? Not oh, most memorable. Shit. I'll take it back. If, if I, I'll tell you mine if you tell me yours. All right. I have to be honest with you. I have to look at the list because I don't remember them all. 
Okay, fair. But what is yours? Um, off the top of my head, without looking at the list, because I don't remember all of them, especially like just off the top of my head. Mm. But Shakira and J Lo. Yeah, that, that was, like, that was one a, of my favorites. That was a good. One. I think it had a really great stance on inclusivity and J Lo being proud of her her culture. They held the flag up. She had her daughter dance. Yeah. Shakira. This is where the infamous like like that happened and everyone was like what the hell just happened with <laughs> their mouth but that's a middle eastern thing like we've done that my whole lives like at middle eastern new year's parties so i loved that year that was my favorite I, and then that one got a lot of backlash because so much y- you know it was it was moms white moms got offended by this whole thing but Be- the year before when it was adam adam, adam Levine, Levine and maroon 5 they had no fucking problem but everyone but, was like uh, yeah because then it's, it's jlo uh. and shakira right they're like oh well they have money that's why they look that way and they were all fucking all salt moms but people also people meaning jlo was also really pissed that she wasn't doing i watched this documentary that came out on netflix i think she was pissed that she wasn't doing the super bowl halftime show solo so she's like why can a hispanic woman not just be a solo person like you've never like prior to that of course after they did like the dre and whatever else but like they like she's like am i not good enough like why am i not good enough as a female spanish artist like hispanic artist to well maybe they saw the opportunity to make it bigger by having shakira there that's what i thought and to her like she was i mean this whole documentary is about how upset she was really like preparing for it getting ready for it and like leading up to it and then her feelings about like feeling like she's not good enough and she's like i've never like i can never do something on my own like why is a hispanic woman not enough like why did why does there have to be two of us versus like you get beyonce you get this person you get whoever like and they're all these solo artists she's like i'm a solo artist but I really loved it. Yeah, I, I and I was I over there it. being like, "Who do I like better right now, J Lo or Shakira?" And Again, she- playing devil's advocate here, you could argue that it it was bigger for the culture yeah. to have two, two of, of them. them. I know what she's saying. I get I it. If she felt that way, she felt that way. But you could argue that you get a different vibe, and it made it bigger for the culture. And not for nothing. I think there's some part in Shakira's family that's like Middle Eastern as well. So you get yeah. a little bit of like just inclusivity of like everything. I think and you it was have two like a bigger thing. Huge artists. Yeah. Anyways, okay. <laughs> My mom loved the Maroon Five year though. That was her favorite. Yeah, of course. But also Adam Levine's a scummy boy because he cheated on his Victoria's Secret hot wife. So Everybody everybody makes mistakes though. Everyone has those days. <laughs> everybody knows what I'm talking about. Everybody gets that way. Okay, so now the <laughs> Nobody's perfect. I gotta work. There's, there's it. always there's always a karaoke again session. Again, again. These fucking okay. episodes. All right, we're gonna go through each one. Okay, starting yeah. with 1969. 67. Wow, that's pretty close. All right, uh, 1967. Now, now these are obviously ones we we don't. I remember. will not know the artists. <laughs> probably uh, the University of Arizona and Grambling State marching bands. Great. No comment. 1968, the Grambling State band. <laughs> Okay, I had heard about how the world has evolved. The U.S. has evolved on Super Bowl stuff. Like, it used to be, like, a lot of, like, marching bands and, like, yeah. choirs and whatever else. Do you want me to really- skip ahead to when there's not a marching band? Yeah, can we can we go ahead? What year? So, from 67 to what? When did we stop the marching band? Um, It, it looks like 19... Uh, I don't know. It... it it goes in and out. Okay, let's hear it. So I'll just say 19, 1969 was the Florida A&M University Band. 1970 was Carol Channing. 1971 was the Florida no A&M idea. Band. No idea. 1972 was Salute to Louis Armstrong. Okay. With Ella Fitzgerald, Carol Channing, Al Hurt, and the U.S. <laughs> Marine Corps Drill Team. Cool. Uh, it looks like they just did like one song kind of thing. 1973 is Happiness Is with the University of Michigan Marching Band and Woody Herman. Oh, 1974, A Musical America with the University of Texas Band. I feel I'm, like these I'm are getting, like, I'm getting to them, I swear. I'm, I'm like, this is, this is uh, torture. Uh, all right. I, I'm trying to find when they really started with the actual, because there's, there's a, all right, I, I got to go into the 80s here. Like they did, 1981 was a Mardi Gras festival. I, I, but I'm, still, there's no like major artists. It looks like this. Wow, dude! It really doesn't get into until the two thousands. Man, um, 
Uh, I, all right. Well, no disrespect to the ones that I'm, I've skipped over, but uh, 1990 was Salute to New Orleans, uh, 40th anniversary of Peanuts characters. <laughs> It sounds like Wait, Macy's I'm, I'm Thanksgiving a, Day I'm Parade. 1991. I went to 1991 was a small world uh, salute to 25 years of the Super Bowl featuring new kids on the block. First one, 91. That sounds like a good one to me. Uh, well, n- n- that's not the first one I'd rather, but um, first band that I recognize, 91. Right. Because 19- there were some solo artists that you mentioned before that I don't know. So 1992 was Winter Magic, including a salute to the winter season and Winter Olympic Games, featuring Gloria Estefan, Brian Boitano, and Dorothy Hamill. No idea. Brian Boitano was a skater. Gloria Estefan's a singer. Okay. You don't know Gloria Estefan? No. Jeez, dude, come on. 1993, Heal the World, featuring Michael Jackson and 3,500 local children. No idea who that is. <laughs> that was, like, <laughs> poorly written with R.I.P., but, like, the scandals and shit. I know. They were not true, apparently. 1994, Rock and Country Sunday, featuring Clint Black, T- Tanya, Tanya Tucker, Travis Tanya? Tritt. I think it's pronounced Tanya. Oh. I could be fucking wrong. Okay. I could... I think it's Tanya. Okay. I feel like we got to look this up. Tanya Tucker, Travis Tritt, Winona, and Naomi Judd. Um, I don't know those people. Jeez, dude. Uh, On to the next one. 1995. You don't... Well, that's country. You don't listen to country. 1995, Indiana Jones and the Temple of the Forbidden Eye, featuring Tony Bennett, Patti LaBelle, Arturo Sandoval, and the Miami Sound Machine. I only know Tony Bennett. Patty LaBelle? Oh, I know Patty LaBelle. I don't know Arturo Sandoval. Nope. <laughs> 1996, Diana Ross. Oh, so now we don't have this like someone in the forbidden, whatever. Like, yeah, why? it was like themed, I guess. That's so weird because we never had. I mean, I don't remember a themed one since like the 2000s. But anyways, Diana Ross, <laughs> no, we know her. Okay, Except for the Janet year, it was themed. Oh, it was something. Okay. Um, 1997, Blues Brothers Bash. Back to this Love, shit. Loved Blues Brothers though. Featuring Dan Aykroyd, John Goodman, and James Belushi. Oh, so it's not the Blues Brothers? Also featuring the Godfather of Soul, James Brown, and ZZ Top. Mm, could have been interesting. Don't know. Yeah, so the, a lot of them were tribute ones I didn't realize. A tribute to Mo, 1998, a tribute to Motown's 40th anniversary. Boys to Men, Smokey Robinson, Queen Latifah, Martha Reeves, and The Temptations. Okay, I know Boys to Men, and I know Queen Latifah. You don't know The Temptations? You know The Temptations. I thought that was like a local band, <laughs> like in my head. I'm sure I know the Temptations. Oh my God. Um, uh, 1999, Celebration of Soul, Salsa, and Swings, <laughs> featuring Stevie Wonder, Gloria Stefan, Big Bad Voodoo Daddy, <laughs> and Tap Dancer. Uh, Gloria Stefan, I feel like you've said that name already. I did. She played. She did quite a few Super Bowl shows. She Good did, for her. She did two, but then she also did the. Two so far, but I think she did the NSYNC one, too. Wasn't she there for I have that? no idea. Good for she her. She did a song with NSYNC. Um, 2000, A Tapestry of Nations featuring Phil Collins, Christina Aguilera, oh. Enrique Iglesias, and Tony Braxton. Okay, that great year. That's a great year. That's a great lineup. That's I a, would, Tony uh, Braxton, unbreak my heart. No. Um, and then Phil no, Collins. No, that's a song. Tarzan. But- Okay. I want to know. This was a good one. Let me hear. 2001, The Kings of Rock and Pop. Aerosmith, NSYNC, Britney Spears, Mary J. Blige, and Nelly. That was a great <laughs> one. That was a beautiful year. That's great. Okay, so starting 2001 was good, right? This is 2002, you just said? That's 2001. The okay, other one was, was 2000. Okay, so of course, of course, the year 2000 is truly groundbreaking in regards to music. Yeah, because now it's all like... Things we know. Yeah, you'll see the... the it's just... Basically one act. It's not themed anymore. Okay. The year see. 2002 was U2. I'm still mad at them for putting shit on my phone. <laughs> I'll never forgive them for that. 2003, Shania Twain, No Doubt and Sting. Man, I feel like, well, I feel like she's saying that during that time. Probably. I like it. Keep going. Wow, 2004 might have been the best one. I'm not Go. Gonna lie. 2004, Janet Jackson, Kid Rock, P. Diddy, Nelly, and Justin Timberlake. We all know what happened on that one. That was actually <laughs> completely Justin Timberlake's fault. 
No, I watched this whole thing. So the reason why, so I watched this whole thing, um, because after that, Janet Jackson had kind of gotten like shamed, like yeah, for it. Um, and there was this whole thing that came out after the whole Britney thing came out on how that was completely Justin Timberlake's fault and he wasn't supposed to actually touch the, the outfit and he did. And when he did, he pulled and he like ripped whatever was there. Um, I remember being at my old house and like seeing it. <laughs> I was just so confused. I feel that. like it was choreographed that way. Apparently it wasn't supposed to happen. Janet Jackson got shamed. Justin never took the blame for it. And then after everything came out about Britney, he like still never did because everyone's saying that like Britney was pregnant and he shamed her and made her get like an uh I need, thing. Like, I need a justice for Justin at this point. A, a Justin tell all. Justice for Justin. I don't know that about that, but I think we need a Justin tell all. Probably, because I like to hear his side. It seemed like it was choreographed. I, I don't know. I but it seemed it. like it was choreographed. Also, his well, new song is fantastic. So I'm okay about it. What? I just like how Jessica Biel was like dancing to her husband's music. But also, he cheated on you. So He cheated on Jessica Biel? Yeah, uh, he held like his co- co-worker's hand, co- uh, co-star's hand out in public. And they went out to like dinner together. So like he claims that nothing ever happened, but... You don't just like hold your co star's hand and take her out to dinner. Jeez, this is a lot of like shitting on Timberlake. I know. I don't like this. I mean, I only speak the truth. Let's go. That's a rumor. 2004. Let's go. Fucking ridiculous. That was 2004. 2005. Let's go. Don't cut me off when we're in the middle of a conversation, <laughs> you ass. Let's hear it. 2005 was Paul McCartney. Oh, nice. 2006 was the Rolling Stones. Okay. Sure. 2007 was Prince and the Florida A&M marching band. Oh, we brought them back. Brought them back. Print, that was a good one. Prince was a good one. I don't really remember it, if I'm being honest. When you were like four. To, what year was that? 2007. I was 13. I was 14 or 13. Yeah, I was probably 13 at the time. 2008, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. That was a good one. I really don't remember that one either, if I'm being honest. 2009, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Just not really Another Bruce. Another band. Mm. Wait, oh, they're not a band. They're a band, but it's it's like Bruce Springsteen's band. They're not like a oh. a, a marching band. Oh, I was thinking marching band with Bruce Springsteen. No, it's the, his band is called the E Street okay. Band. <laughs> 2010, <laughs> The Who. Okay. Uh, 2011, The Black Eyed Peas, Usher, and Slash. Okay, so now I have um a gap in my brain from 2004 to 2011. I don't remember anything. In is that, that when you were playing with your imaginary friend, maybe? Yes. If you don't know where we're talking to, listen <laughs> to the previous episode. But I think, yeah, yeah. I don't remember anything in between. 2011. So, But I don't remember Usher being there. I just remember Black Eyed Peas. I, I just, yeah, I'm not really a big Black Eyed Peas guy. I know. Neither am I. 2012 was Madonna. Don't I don't really remember that. I feel like I'm thinking more of her iconic time of making out with Britney, and that wasn't the Super Bowl. So it was the VMA. That was the VMA. So I don't know that one. I don't yeah. remember her in that one. 2013 was Beyonce. I do remember that one. I think so. yeah, because then she brought out Destiny's Child for a minute, didn't she? Or did she not? No. Did Kelly come out with that? No, I, I don't think. They, so. I thought they did like a little reunion there. Did I? I just wanted did they? to see that. Everyone was dead said that In Sync was going to be. Somewhere over here in the Super Bowl this year. It'd be awesome. Because they kept on teasing like this, like, we're keeping a secret. They haven't, they still haven't said the secret. I think they're going to announce a tour this year. Anyways, continue. I think so too. Well, Timberlake's we're going, going, right? Timberlake's going on tour to promote his new album. But he did say on the Kelly Clarkson show that he has been in the studio with NSYNC. So I think that. Dropping he, an album. I think so. He's probably going to do his solo tour mm. because Instinct coming back. If you don't, if you don't tour behind an album after all these years, it's yeah. going to be like a, a novelty act. Yeah, they need to go out on a promoting a new album. I think. Fair. Uh, 2014, Bruno Mars and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I do remember that. I feel like it's like vanilla ice cream, but on both sides, it's like. <laughs> it was weird. I remember thinking it's weird because they had two very different acts from each other. I don't really remember it. Uh, 2015, Katy Perry, Lenny Kravitz, and Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott was the star of that show, I think. I do remember Missy Elliott more so than anyone else. But you know what's really funny? Now that you're saying that these women are playing with other people, like, 
Missy or Katie could have said all any of that other stuff about why am I not good enough as a solo act? It's just, that's the name of the game. You target different audiences or the same audience. So the fact that JLo was pissed is kind of weird. Well, Anyways. Yeah, but there's, there's, and we'll get to it, but Beyonce was by herself. Madonna was by herself. Lady Gaga's coming up. All right. Get to those because I want to I want to see what else I remember. 2016, Coldplay, Beyonce, and Bruno. I feel like this that was just like a recycled year. Yeah, because they Bruno was like two years before that. Yeah, and Beyonce, and Beyonce was, was the, like a few years before that. Yeah, and then Coldplay was its first time. Yeah, I don't know. Weird. I also don't like Coldplay, but that's what's they have like a good song. <laughs> I mean, their their songs are good. They're just overplayed. Anyways, 2017, Lady Gaga. I do remember that year, and I loved that year. That was that was a good one, I think. That was a good one. She did good. Uh, 2018, Justin Timberlake and the Tennessee Kids. I think I didn't watch that one. Mm, if I, I'm being I think honest. I, I think I probably watched it. What year was that? 2018. I still remember. Oh, I definitely watched it, but I don't think I liked it very much. It's funny how like the, the halftime shows, for the most part, are not memorable. They're really not. <laughs> There's a few that are memorable for me, and it's like the Janet Jackson because her tit was out, um, and, and then whatever was the most recent, which was like Maroon Five, Shakira and J Lo, and then like the big group of having like Eminem and yeah. Dre and everyone else in between Snoop Dogg. I think the memorable one now that I'm thinking of it and looking at this list was the Janet Jackson year, but the Aerosmith in sync. Uh, whatever year that was, that one, and I do remember Tom Petty. I remember Prince. Those were good ones. Um, what year was that? Aerosmith, Insync, Britney Spears, Mary J. Blige, and Nelly. That's yeah. two thousand one. See, like I remember that one because that was like, if I could have, that was big. If I could have put my two cents into that, I would have done Backstreet Boys, Insync, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears. I know, but that's all pop. And then he throw in a Mandy Moore. That's that's all white pop though. This the 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 point was, this was called the Kings of Rock and Pop. So you had Aerosmith, you had Instinct, Britney Spears, but you also had Mary J. Blige and Nelly, which is more like the R and B hip hop route. So you kind of had it. That's a good flavor right there. That's a, that's a nice mix. But I don't consider them pop. That's R and B. That's what I mean. I, I the title is Kings of Rock and Pop, but you have rock, you have pop, you have R and B hip hop. I like that's a nice. It's a nice mix. All right, on to the next one. Uh, 2019. Here we go. Maroon 5, Travis Scott, and Big Boy. I don't remember Travis Scott or remember. Big Boy being there. I just remember Adam Levine had his shirt off. And, yep. And the, all and, the ladies went wild. And the girls went wild. That's all I remember, too. I didn't even know Travis Scott was there. All right. 2020, Shakira, J-Lo, Bad Bunny, J Balvin, and... Emma Muniz. Couldn't Emma. tell you. Didn't know that Bad Bunny went in, was in it or J. J Balvin. I didn't either. I just remember Shakira. It was Shakira. a Shakira and J Lo show to me. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. I like to see them dance. <laughs> Anyways, 2021 was the weekend. I remember this was like a letdown performance. I remember people being like, I think we could have done better. It's, it wasn't him. That was the mirrors, right? He yeah. Was like in yeah, all yeah, the yeah, mirrors yeah. and it was like. It wasn't Trippy. him. It was. It was like it was the, the production. Yeah. yeah, the production, not the performance. Rather, I think he's a great singer. Abel, his name's Abel. Really? Yeah. Is it? What's yeah. Drake's real name? I don't know. You don't? I do. Who no. is it? Um, Sh not Shelby. No, wait. What's his name? You're it's close. A, it's a girl name. Like typically a girl name. Aubrey. Yeah. Twenty twenty two. Eminem, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Kendrick, and Mary J. Blige. That was a great year where a lot of millennials were really excited for that one. It w that was, a, again, a recency bias, but that was a memorable one with, like, the Aerosmith one, Tom Petty, Prince. I, I would put that one up there. That, that was one for millennials, one. like, my parents hated it, but it's because that wasn't their generation of music. Like, that was me and my generation and Nick and you and, like, even younger. Like, my mom and dad were like, I just don't get it. I. It's also the generation before us, after your parents, which is Gen X. Yeah. Because Dre, Snoop Dogg, even Mary J. Blige is kind of like the bridge is like true X and millennial. Yeah. And then the Z's, I don't know what they listen to. No idea. Maybe Kendrick. So oh, there, yeah, there was a good bridge of like. People were so dumbfounded on why Kendrick was there. And I'm like, Kendrick was like a perfect person to have in there. Because people are thinking, well, you have all these like singers who 
have been around for years and artists who have been around for years. Yeah. And then you have Kendrick who hasn't been around for a long time, but people are at the same time. He also was like ghostwriting for people for like a little bit of time beforehand or like people ghost wrote for him or something like that. Like, yeah, but he's are, also like the new age West coast. Yeah. You know, I love Kendrick. Not a Kendrick. Guy. Nikki and I went to his concert. He's very good. I just don't like it. I just don't like the voice. I like his voice. This is why we do this. Actually, show. did we go? Yeah, we went to Kendrick. <laughs> like, did we go together? Uh, twenty twenty three was Rihanna. I remember that year, obviously, because it wasn't that long. It was just a year mm. ago, but people were indifferent because one, because she was pregnant, she obviously couldn't do the really exotic dance moves that she typically does. And yep. people were like, "Well, she can't really like move because she's pregnant. That's nothing against her. It's just." She's very pregnant, yeah. but I think she did great. Like, what's the what's the, oh the rude boy? Everyone knew the dance. Come on, rude boy. <laughs> take it, take it. Okay. No, you've never seen it. I've have seen it. I've seen that video a million times. Boy, boy, they do this thing. Yep. yep. So, <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I, I the only thing I didn't like about the performance, I didn't had no problem that she was pregnant, couldn't do the dance moves. She didn't play my favorite Rihanna song. Disturb you? No, please don't stop the music. Oh, did not play it. I'm sorry. And I love that song. It's so good. My favorite is Disturb you. That's, that's a good. She played that one. Though, I didn't think she? she. I think so. Because I was like, I she heard has she's going on tour this, this year. Is she? Rumor on the street. Rumor on the street. And then I do like Rihanna Usher's this year. I like Rihanna. But Usher also has played previous years. Like, why do we I not know. get like new people? Well. I know that they haven't really made a name for themselves. I'm not saying necessarily new, but like, yeah. why don't, why did we never do like One Direction? Like, that was a huge mm. band to back. Why didn't we ever get like Justin? Why didn't we get Taylor? Why are we not but, getting. But Taylor Swift. I, Selena Gomez. From, from not what Selena, I heard, but like, Taylor Swift has turned down the Super Bowl multiple times. Oh. I, don't quote me on that, but I, that's what I heard. I heard okay. she, she turned down the Super Bowl. For whatever reason. Remember on the street? Not just this year, multiple years. Okay. But there's also, when they play, I think it was Super Bowl 50? was in San Francisco. Okay. It was the perfect opportunity to have Metallica play. I mean, they've, they've spanned, you know, 40 years. And it, that San Francisco is where they're from. Yeah. That was the perfect opportunity to finally have, like, a, a band like that. Mm -hmm. And they didn't do it. Yeah, like... They don't do rock they Foo really. Fighters, like I would have loved to see like the Foo Fighters in there with like the Foo Fighters and thir three uh, Third Eye Blind and some other Three Doors Down. No, no, nobody wants that. Uh, nobody wants that. I just want like a little something, but like, why are we bringing back the same like three people multiple years in a row? I know. Next year's gonna be like Beyonce again and, and like Jay Z this time. You know who they could have done this year? Who just got back together? Who? Oh. Creed. <laughs> True, but like, why not? Do you? No, it would have been fine. Creed, Nick wants to go. Creed, Nickelback. That's what I mean. Like Nickelback was like, there's so many other things that you could do. It, it's very, Why did they never utilize the Spice Girls in their like prime? Again, I don't know. Maybe they didn't offer it or maybe they turned it down. I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. But it's very poppy now. It's, it's not very, it's very commercial. Other than the year with Eminem and, and Dre and all them. That was like the first year in a little while that they didn't go like the pop route. Yeah. I wonder who makes those calls. I don't know, but like I wish let's, let's let's reach out to this person and try this out. I would I would have really liked to see Metallica in that one because it's like what they're still too edgy for like this. I mean, everybody knows their songs. Potentially, though, that's silly though. But most of the people who watch football listen to Are that like, type of shit. Well, you're not wrong. It's like Anyone that, who, like the older, like the dads. Yeah, my dad would love that. That's all he listened to my in the 90s. My dad would probably like that, too, to be honest. my You know my dad's still waiting for, like, Leonard Skinner to come or something. They still are around. No, none of the original members, I don't think. No. But, uh, they, but tour, they, like, they could have done... What if one year we have it in Alabama, and they just do Sweet Home Alabama? Just that one song. Just that one song. I, yeah, I don't know. I, again, and you look at all the acts, like... I had to skip to 91 just to get to, like... Yeah. But you think about, like, the 80s, and, like, I guess it was a different era, but, like, Motley Crue in the 80s, you didn't have Metallica in the 90s. I wonder who made the call to be, like, guys, let's not use marching bands like Florida A&M, and let's try <laughs> yeah. Prince. And everyone's like, yes, good idea, let's do it. It's like a spectacle now. Yeah. 
It's really expensive. It's like $52,000 to get decent seats. I just, I cares? just looked it up. Yeah. We just looked it up yesterday, today. <sighs> I would never spend that money. And then if you want nosebleeds, they're still like five grand. Even if my team was ever in a Super Bowl again in my lifetime, I would rather just do what I do on Sundays and just watch it on TV and just be in my own One thing comfort. I wish I had done was, because I was finally old enough to like travel by myself and whatever, was when Brady was at the Bucks and he won. Mm -hmm. I wish I was in Tampa to kind of just like be around. I, I would love to be around. I don't want to be at the Super Bowl, yeah. but to be around like the love and the whatever of everyone being so excited. Like I wish I could have done it for the Patriots, but I there's no way I could have done that. You on had my, six opportunities. I was also young and I couldn't do that. But like uh, I, 2018. You were still watching that's true. You were still watching Disney Channel in 2018. I was. I was. <laughs> but I wish I had done it for Tampa Bay because that wasn't that long ago. And I could have just bought my flight and just gone down. Could have, should have, would have. Entertainment budget. I know. It's growing. It's, it's already, I know it's, it's bad. You're already on a bad stretch this year. I know. One month in. It has not improved. No, but everything else has that, done better. I, well, it wasn't part of your in and out list. Nope. Okay. <laughs> you just it don't give a fuck. It will never be. Because <laughs> I know it would be a fail. Why would I set myself up for failure? If anything, I gotta, we gotta work on Nick's. Nick's Nick's Nick has very bougie fashion taste. Like worse than me. Worse than you. You're more about experiences and shit. Yes. Which is fine. I think I'd rather be more into like experiences, as you said, than to be into like bougie yeah. clothing. Yeah, because but he is the like the watch. Uh, we were talking about something else a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't a watch. It was something else. Who knows? Remember that you we were talking about the watch but when we filmed something here. Remember we were talking, he said something. I was like, what? I forget what it was. A, a jacket, maybe? I forget. Oh, yeah. He was talking about the winter coat from, um, oh my gosh, what's the name of it? Oh, Montclair. Montclair. The the winter coats, that they're like very puffy. Yeah. They're like $5,000 for a coat. I was like, why? He was like, Joe, you're getting this for me? He was like, fuck no. No. I'm not. No. I wear the same shit all the time. Yeah. I'm like, you're asking the wrong person, no. Dave. No, I have to like reason with myself to spend seventy dollars on shoes, and it's like it pains me. And to then do you it. ask your mom for it instead for Christmas. Well, I bought like two pairs of like Puma shoes from a shoe store. It was like buy one get one half off, and I, I regretted it as soon as I left. And then, but I wear them now, so I'm like, I'm okay with it. As long as you use it, that's all that matters. Anyway, all right. So what in the future, 2025? Who do you want to see play the halftime show? Taylor Swift. Okay. And if we're, if that's like not an option and not on the table, I'd really like to see, if you have one off the top of your head, you say it. I'm, I don't know. Metallica would be, I would love to see them play the, the halftime show. I would say either Taylor, Justin Bieber, or like weird enough, I really would love to see the Foo Fighters, but not by themselves. Maybe like Foo Fighter, Red Hot Chili already did it, but like mm. with somebody else. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like even like a a legend act because that's kind of they've sort of bring those in too. I don't know. Or like I just wish that they had done people that like have like really cool songs that are memorable. Like you just have like the killer singing like Mr. Brightside and then you hear like closing time from like another band as like the finale, but before that and before Brightside, you get like, if I go crazy, then like I can hear it in my head. Like I can, I can see it. How, I wish they would do So that. you want a festival? Yes. <laughs> I want Coachella for Super Bowl. Boston I, Calling. I'm trying to think of like another act that would be. Big, big enough would be Taylor or Justin. In reality. I wouldn't mind seeing that are modern, 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 modern era. I wouldn't mind seeing like the Beebs. Um I don't know. They they don't really do a lot of rock country, really. I guess. No. I mean, there's plenty of country. I acts mean, there's that they a lot of do. country fans, which is surprising. But you're really hitting a target audience. Like I, I mean, I really wouldn't watch. I know, but see, but what if they brought like Rascal Flats? God bless the broken road. And then you have them, and then you have like Luke Combs because Luke Combs just made a new song with not a new song, but made the song with Tracy Chapman, and yeah. they were singing Fast Car. So that's not really a new song, but it's an old song, but it's a good song. And you get like this in the country realm. There's plenty Luke because Bryan, you could you could have Morgan Wallen. 
multiple. Yeah, but you're doing all the new age shit. Rascal is Flatts fun. isn't new. No, but that's like the, you just named all like new people. I know that's true. Which is fine. You can do like a little montage, but you got like older one. You could do like a Brad Paisley, Alan Jackson. I don't even know who that is. Kenny. Kenny Chesney. Why are we going first name basis? Because he's you knew who I was talking about, right? I did. Okay. So anyway, Barely. that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's so a, we'll see what happens 2025 2025 prediction oh i know that's tough name one 2025 prediction because we can't be like this or this or this i'm gonna say justin bieber i don't know if taylor if taylor i would have said taylor because she's big enough to do it and whatever yeah. but because you said that she potentially has turned it down i'm gonna say justin i'm gonna say it's gonna be a boy band extravaganza you're gonna see nsync reunite you're gonna see the backstreet boys I hate when you go into this voice. You're go ahead. see new kids on the block. All right. And on that note, I love that for, I, lo- I truly love that for I all love of us. that for me. <laughs> and I don't hate that for me. See you later.